understand what is happening. He went all in and he mucked his cards. There's still another gentleman, so this gentleman went all, all in with no cards. I can call the floor uh, for you. Uh, uh, no, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. If I see a card that it's callable, I'm gonna. It's, uh... oh, come on, bro. come on. <laughs> I'm all in. What's up, everybody? Today I'm gonna go through some very tough situations that I involved myself roughly a year ago at Resorts World. I actually posted this vlog and I had to unlist it because of all the hate some people sent to a player who was in the footage and asked me very politely to delete the vlog. So in this one, I will protect his identity and his face, but those are the only things I will hide from this episode. All the rest of the events will be shown 100% and you'll be able to make your own judgments from the situation. Welcome back to the Poker Profit channel, the first poker vlog created to help you become a better poker player. First hand in this sick 1-3 session I get King Jack suited from the button, cutoff raises to 15, cutoff is a woman that I have no information about it, usually when I'm in this spot I'm gonna join the hand by 3 betting, cause I know most of the times I'm gonna miss the flop and I like to be the aggressor in position, but sometimes I'm gonna decide to flat, and the hands that I'm gonna decide to do so are the hands that develop well post-flop, like King Jack suited, Queen Jack suited, Ten Jack suited. I'm gonna still 3-bet some of the times these hands, but in this case I decided just to flat. The flop comes King, Queen, Jack with two hearts. She checks to me and I'm gonna bet to protect my equity. I bet 20, she folds and we take the first pot. Second hand I get 8-9 suited from the cutoff. I raise to 13, button 3-bets me to 35. He decides to go with a smaller size, which allows me to call profitably with 8-9 suited, so that's what I do. I call the 35, we go heads up to the flop, the flop is good for us, 8-4-3 with 2 clubs, I check, he bets 35 again, I'm losing mostly to over pairs now, but I'm winning hands like ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, ace-ten, ace-five that he could have suited, so I believe I'm winning most of the times here. I decide to call and analyze following streets. His effective stack is 300 plus. The turn is a safe one out of the over cards that could come in the turn. The 10 is the one which is less likely for him to have, unless he has something like ace 10, king 10, queen 10, jack 10, which is not as likely. I check again, he bets again, 65 now. If I raise here, I'm gonna be committed if he decides to go all in, so I don't think raising is a good option. I think I should just call again and analyze the following street. So that's what I do, I call. River is a 6, pretty much a blank, doesn't complete no flush draw, 7-9 would get there but I don't think he has 7-9 that often. I check again, he decides to check back, I show the 8-9 and it's good. Next thing I get pocket 9s in the hijack, I raise to 13, cut off small blind and big blind call, so 4 players see the flop, the flop comes jack, 8, 5, rainbow, most likely I'm still winning this hand, I see bet 25, button and small blind call, until the big blind re-raises to 75, now I don't think I'm winning anymore, so I'm just gonna decide to fold and go to the next hand, in the end everybody folded and there was no showdown. Next hand I'm in the button with ace 10 also, hijack raises to 15, as I told you before, I'm usually gonna play 3 betting this spot, and that's what I do, I 3 bet to 50 dollars, only hijack calls, I felt strength on her, so after I feel that, I have a red flag, so I'm gonna be more cautious on the post flop, cause there are many hands that are beating ace 10 offsuit, and I'm not quite sure she would 4 bet hands like ace jack, ace queen, ace king, or pocket 9s plus. The flop comes queen, queen 3, rainbow, she checks to me, usually I'm gonna bet here to protect my equity, but because of the reasons I told you, I decide to check back, turns a good one, a 10 of diamonds, she checks again, and I'm gonna go for value, I bet $40, she calls, River is a 4, she checks again, and I'm gonna bet for value again, targeting hands like ace king, ace jack, nines, eight, seven, sixes, I bet 105 now, she folds, and we take the hand. Next hand I get pocket aces, I'm in the hijack, low jack raises to 6, I'm gonna 3 bet here, he is a 50 to 60 year old player, that seems to be careless about his chips, and my image at this table is on of an aggressive guy, so I 3 bet to 20, only hijack calls, we go heads up to the flop, flop is king, jack, deuce, with two hearts, I'm losing to very few combinations of hands, but he'll have a piece of this board pretty often, so when he checks to me, I decide to bet 30 dollars, 
three quarters of the pot. He calls, the turn is not the best, now I'm losing for hands like king queen, king jack, queen jack, but I'm still winning some combinations of hands. He checks again, and now I could go either with checking or betting. I decide to check back and control the pot, and allow his bluffs to continue in the river. River is a three of hearts, flush gets there, but I have the ace of hearts. He separates chips, bets $45. I snap call, he shows queen 9 also, I show the aces and we take the pot. Little more than an hour of game, winning $260, next hand I'm in the under the gun, with king queen suited, I raise to 15, button 3 bets 45, her effective stack is like 130, and my image at this table is of an aggressive guy so she could be leveling with me, it's only me and her at the hand, and because she has such a small stack, I rather just putting her all in, other to flat and play out of position against her, so that's what I do, I put her all in, she calls, it ends up she had ace king offsuit, I show the king queen, and she wins the hand, Next thing, I'm in the under the gun again, with 10-9 suited, I raise to 13, cut off button and small blind call, so 4 players see the flop, the flop comes 10-5-4, all diamonds, I make top pair, small blind checks to me, I'm gonna bet here, I bet half pot, I think I should have bet a little bigger, like 2 thirds, but it's okay, button and small blind call, there are many turns that I don't like to see, the 5 of hearts is not terrible, but it might be one of them, I decide to check, but probably call for a bet, button bets 55, small blind calls, and now I'm at a tough spot, if small blind folds, I would probably call here, but when she calls, I feel like the majority of the times I'll be losing this hand, and even though it's a 55 call for a 219 pot, and I don't have to win that much for this call to be profitable, I just felt like it wasn't a good decision to continue in this hand, so I decided to fold, turn was a diamond, a 9 of diamonds, she went all in, and he folded, so we didn't see any showdown, winning 160 for now, next hand I get ace king offsuit, I'm in the low jack, I raise to 15, button calls, I feel like she was thinking I was really loose, cause I was raising a lot, 3 betting as well, and maybe she was leveling with me, so ace king is a great hand to have, especially when I hit top pair in the flop, if she has a hand like ace queen and ace 7, congrats, she's gonna make a lot of money on me, I bet $20, little more than half of the pot, she calls, which is a great sign, the turn is a great one, a blank, 8 of clubs, I'm gonna keep betting here, but now with my image, I think it's a great spot to go with a bigger sizing, I bet 55, she calls, her effective stack is around $300, river is a queen of clubs, which is not good, I don't block the ace of clubs, but still, I don't think she will have a queen or a club that often, and here I find myself in a complex spot, cause I think I can still extract value from many ace-x hands, and if she has a flush or a queen, when I check she's gonna bet for value, but if I bet, I'm not quite sure she's gonna raise, and I don't think she is that good of a player that in case I raise, she's gonna re-raise all in as a bluff, so I decided to go with a different line, which is betting two thirds of the pot, and in case she shoves, I'm gonna just fold, but try to extract value from ace-x hands with this bet. I bet 125, two thirds of the pot, and she goes into the tank. Now I'm feeling safer, I hope she calls. She shows an ace and folds, very nice fold from her, congrats. Next thing I get king jack of space again, I'm in the button, two limpers before me, I raise 15, I wanna play this hand in position against them, and I want to allow the hands that I'm dominating, such as king 10, king 9, queen jack, jack 10, jack 9 to remain in the hand, so that's why I make this sizing, small blind re-raises to $40, the one three feel at resource world, usually makes ongoing mistakes on sizings, especially pre-flop, small blind versus button, he should definitely re-raise bigger than that, because it leaves me in a too comfortable spot of calling $25 to play in position against him, so I call and we go heads up to the flop, the flop is great for my hand, I got 2 overs and a flush draw, he bets 40 again, easy call for me, I just wait for a while before calling, not to make it so obvious that it's an easy call, the turn is great, I make my flush, he checks to me, and now I'm targeting hands like aces, kings, queens, jacks that he has in his range, 3 betting 40 preflop, effective stack is $400, I bet 105, preparing for a shove in the river, unfortunately he snap folds, and we take the hand. Next hand I get ace queen offsuit from the hijack, one limper before me, I raise to 16, I go larger, cause my image at the table is of a loose and aggressive guy, so I wanna charge them. What? 
700, 700. All the table already know I have a vlog, and I feel like they think I'm pushing them around. I'm gonna show this hand, no matter what. Okay? I make top pair in the flop, I'm heads up against this woman. She checks for me, I bet $20, she quickly calls. Turns a jack, any nine makes a straight. She checks for me, and I decide to check back and control the pot. River is a nine, she checks for me again. Effective stack is like $600. I feel like she will rarely have a king here, and we are chopping this hand most of the times. And I have all the ace king in my range. There's a good chance I would bet the ace king on the turn, but there are some times that I would check back. So here I think it's a good spot to represent ace king. I bet 155, around 200% of the pot. She thinks for a long time and folds. Next hand I get pocket 7s from the hijack, 2 limpers before me again, I raise $20 in position, button decides to 3 bet me to $70, his effective stack is 370 again my image at this table is from a pretty aggressive guy, so I don't think his range 3 betting me from the button will be that strong, and pocket 7s is a pretty decent hand that is flipping against most of his 3 betting range in my opinion, so when the action comes back to me, pocket 7s I feel like it's a pretty decent hand to put him all in. So that's what I do. When he does a snap call, I already feel way safer. He folds and I take down the hand. Next hand I get queens on the middle position. I raise to 15, only big blind call. We go heads up to the flop. I hit top set, she checks to me. I bet $10, one third of the pot. She calls, turns a six. Now she leads out $20. I decide to take advantage of my image at the table and re-raise here. I raise to $55. She pretty much snap re-re-raises me to 200. I feel like she's pretty strong. Effective stack is like 500 something. All in. I put her all in and I feel like I made a mistake here. I could have totally just called in position and let her go all in in the river. She goes into the tank. If I call, will you kill me? In situations like that, I just keep quiet and don't say nothing. That's what I advise for 99% of the players, because most of the times when you open your mouth, you're gonna end up giving out information you don't want to give out. So I just kept quiet. She folds. It is a nice fold. Yeah. It is a nice fold. And we most likely didn't extract as much value as we could. Afterwards, she said she had a set. Do you think she really had it? Yes or no? Let me know what you think in the comments. I change tables and trust me, things will go crazy in this seat. I'm winning around $700 for now in 3 hours and 55 minutes of game. Okay, now I have to explain what just happened in this table. A guy with his friend was really drunk, he's from Dallas, and there was just one spot at the table we were at, but he wanted to play with his friend. So what he did was just throwing $100 in the middle of the table and say, who wants to give this spot for $100? A guy in my right decided to get the $100 and leave. And when that happened, I regretted a little bit not to take the $100 because, man, $100 is like two hours of play and I was already thinking about leaving the table. But then the dealer just looked at me and said, you don't want to leave this table. <laughs> and you guys will see the reason why soon. The first hand of this guy at the table, he already went all in in the dark. He was buying in for the max for $400 and he was going all in in the dark. So pretty amazing spot to be at. He went all in in the dark. Guy in my right decided to call the all in. King queen offsuit with this guy going all in. I don't think it's a great hand for me to decide to go for it. So I decide to fold. Thank you. The man shows ace jack. Ace jack. Aces and eight. Jack. And it's good. He kept doing the same thing, all in in the dark. Now, who is a viewer of the vlog, has aces. Three players in the hand. Alright, y'all got a side pot for... 145, I guess. 145. Three players. Somebody's all in. Thank you. That's your side pot. Main pot. That's what you got. Good luck, bro. Thank you, man. Yeah. Okay, I gotta say something important. One of the players who went all in against him lost 
like 150 dollars and decide to get out of the table he was an elderly guy who i'm pretty sure he had money in his pocket to keep going in this table and if you find yourself in a table like that and you have money to keep going you just cannot leave this table like there is too much money to be made here of course there is risk for you to lose it but man if you are a table like that and you leave this table you are literally leaving too much money inside the table so just keep playing don't leave and embrace the variance you know because through the long run you will definitely make a lot of money staying there so there is no way you should leave a table like that and unfortunately that elderly guy left and of course don't play money that you don't have but if you have money to invest at the table that's exactly what you should do because situations like that are rare all in blind yeah, oh my god this guy called him, so I'm gonna change his mind. Ah. Three hands at this table, he, he already left it, $800, so the $100 that he offered was definitely a bad deal for the guy who accepted it. He kept going all in blind every hand, which is a dream, honestly. Finally, he had the first victim, this is gonna happen sooner or later, and he hits his eight and wins a $800 pot. I like DJ. <laughs> He's all in blind again, now against his friend. <laughs> Uh, you have choices? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, that's not a good board. <laughs> Four aces. Show me. Show you? Aces. You got aces? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's on you. It wasn't on you before. It's on you. It's on. Oh, turn off? Yeah, he's okay, okay. It's out, it's out. Okay, he didn't like me recording him. That's why I'm gonna hide his face. Like, I'm not here to disrespect no one. Are you calling, bro? Hey, don't let him talk to you like that. I mean, oh, you call. You call. You can already see that that guy kind of doesn't like me. Almost five hours of game. I'm still winning around $700. Now I see Ace Jack offsuit from the middle position. He's going all in in the dark soon. I limp. Instead of going all in, he raises 30 in the dark. Under the gun shoves all in for 300 plus. This guy was his friend and I believe his range shoving a raise from his friend is gonna be better than Ace Jack offsuit and that's why I folded. Next hand I get King 10 offsuit and I fold again. No good spot just yet to go all in against him. He is still going all in every time just so you guys know. So he already left it at the table around $1,500 in less than an hour of game. Now I see King Jack offsuit. He raises 70 in the dark. One player calls and King Jack offsuit is just not good enough again for the same reasons as before. Jeff is the one that is making the most money on him. Like he's just getting a lot of great spot and he is in one of the best spots at the table you should stop to think about it. Cause if he's going all in in the dark, he is always the second last one to act after everybody else wins again he's already winning more than a thousand dollars easily from this guy very cool finally we have a decent hand he is all in in the dark but i limp because he's not in his spot yet he goes all in everybody folds i call 700 in the pot no one ever pointed that out he called here we go buckle up not a good flop great turn Great board for me. I show the king queen. He doesn't want to be shown at the camera, and I'm gonna respect that. Yes. His game is not good enough, and we finally take the first spot. Hold on, because there will be a lot of spots against him tonight. Winning little more than a thousand dollars now. Next thing I get a7 suited. I call. He's all in in the dark again. A7 suited is good enough. He's all in for two hundred sixty-six dollars. I'm not that good. I call. One hundred forty in the pot. Call. Okay. Thank you. The board is great for my hand. I showed the a7. We got a full house right here. He shows a jack. Jack, eight or six, he wins. Eight. eight. And yes, he has an eight, and we lose this hand. 266. How does the jack go? Where's the eight? 266. 
Jack, Jack. Jack. Two Next hint is one of the most controversial hints from the history of this vlog. I know the crazy guy is going all in as he usually does, so I decide to limp from the under the gun. Limps as well, so I got a red flag. He goes all in. Pretty tough spot for me, cause nines are good enough to call his all in. But has more chips than me in my left, and I feel like his range is really strong. And now, when I'm deciding what to do, the says fold, fold, which is pretty tough for me to do it. But I decide to trust him, and I fold. He calls, and he has queens. Oh my god, man! Oh my god, bro! If didn't say for me to fold, I honestly feel like I was gonna go all in. So thanks to I didn't lose all my stack here, which is crazy. Next thing I get ace queen offsuit, I go all in against him. He's all in for $400, but he just lost the hand in the past, so he doesn't have this, his chips in front of him. But that's a $400 all in. I call. Flop is great. Turn in river not so much. He doesn't have a heart. I show the ace queen and it's good. In the end, the staff said that he had only 300 and not 400. That's kind of unfair because the hand was played like he had 400, but okay. Yo, I gotta say, I need to go to the bathroom so bad, but there's no chance I'm gonna get out of here. We're winning a little more than a thousand so far. He's still in the same spot, going all in 95% of his hands. Next hand, I'm in the under the gun with ace queen offsuit. He folds in the dark, so now we're gonna play a normal hand. <laughs> Free raises me to 45 from the under the gun plus one. The player in my right who was friends with the crazy guy decides to call. So I decide to call the ace queen and play post flop. Three players see the flop. The flop is ace seven three rainbow. Great flop for me. We both check to who bets 35. Player in my right calls. And here I could check raise, but I'm still losing to ace king. And the game is really deep. So I decide just to call and see the turn. Turn is a blank, a deuce of diamonds. We check to again who checks back, and now I'm feeling pretty confident that I'm winning. River is a 7, not the best card, but it's okay. Most of the times I'm gonna still be winning here. I bet 110 now, they both fold and I take the pot. No, um, you need to stop. There are two people with cards and you have killed your hand with an all in action. They are entitled to their hand. Okay, the dealer was already stressed out with that guy because he was just doing whatever he wanted to do. And she was a great dealer. She was actually the best dealer I found in Resort World. And I understand her, but now understand what is happening. He went all in and he mucked his cards. There's still yeah, another gentleman, so this guy all, in. all in with no cards. I can call the floor uh, for you. Uh, 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 no, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be totally honest with you. If I see a card that it's callable, I'm going to... Oh, come on, bro. come on. No, I, I, I'm, I'm not a douchebag. I'm not a douchebag, man. Like I have queen, I have king jack here. Like I would, I would call a, a lean blind here, bro. I, I'm not unfair with no one. I'm not unfair with no one. It's, it's that's a fucked up situation. I, I rather you to give him back to his cards because I, I want to call. But, but I'm not a douchebag. I'm not a douchebag. Call the floor. I, everybody here knows that I would call this hand here. Like, I, I don't have to lie enough. At this moment, I was just trying to figure out a way to solve this issue in a fair manner. If that guy was being friendly to me, I would totally just fold my hand and say, okay, like, this guy is a fish, this guy is an insane guy that is just going all in every time. But he wasn't treating me well, he didn't want me to vlog, and I don't own nothing to this guy, you know? And I would totally call with King Jack here an all in blind after everybody folds. So I figured out a way in my head and I offered him. Um, That's crazy. No, 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 bro. No, no. Relax. I'm gonna do what is fair. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? My name is Romulo and I'm fair. Like, I have King Jack and I would call. I I'm just thinking. I enjoyed it. Hopefully I'll see you again. Are you it's coming tomorrow? No Bro, no I I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you an offer. Give me two hundred and fifty dollars and and I and I'm gonna be fine. I'm being honest to you, bro. That's fair. No, for real, like No, I, I have my option here. No, you sir. And now the floor of the room comes in this scene and just makes the most horrible decision I have ever seen a floor make, honestly. What's up? 
You have you have you have him called. His, his hand is dead. If you'd called before his hand is in the muck, then the hand's gonna play out. Uh, yeah. But his hand is in the muck. You have him called. Bro, here's. We're moving on. How much? How much he has in in that stack? Yeah, yeah. We made a deal. We made a deal. It's done. It's done. Okay, I call. You can't, you can't make I no, call. No, and he takes Firstly, time. you can't make a deal. You gotta give. He cannot give you. Okay, hey, yo, I'm gonna give you through the outside. How much he has? No, 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 no. Wait. What are you doing? I call. We're moving on. You cannot call. We, I already. We already established. You cannot call. Oh, okay. If you call before he folds, the hand's gonna play. So, out. so it's done. You, if this 250 is his. Okay, it's all over. Okay, stack. okay, Sorry. okay. In my opinion, the floor was tripping, like he was pretty much saying that the hand was over, but that's not fair with me because I didn't fold my hand. But the crazy guy was looking at me and saying, you, we, we're good, we're good, and saying that he accepted the offer for 250. I decided to trust the crazy guy and hopefully he would be fair to me and you guys will see if he was fair to me or not. So I fold the hand. I'm just gonna let both of you know, you're not gonna be passing him any chips, you're not gonna be accepting any chips. I can't keep on coming back for the it's same fine. thing. No, it's fine. If it happens again, you're both gonna have to leave. Okay, okay. Thank you. I'm all in I got a serious question to you. What would you do in my spot, honestly? With King Jack offsuit, the guy goes all in blind and then mucks his cards. What would you do? Like, I want it to be fair. And I honestly feel like getting 250 clean is a fair deal. But what do you think about that? I want to hear your opinion. He goes all in in the dark. I have ace 10 offsuit this time. I call. Ace 10 versus ace deuce. Thank you. Ace 10 over ace deuce offsuit. I love the deuce. <laughs> the deuce is loose. <laughs> wow. oh my God. He makes strip deuces in the flop and wins the hand. How much is it? How much? 310. 310. He wins the hand again and I lose $310. Three. It's fine, it happens. I'm not even mad with this. That's Ten. poker. No, no, no. We, we do it later, we do it later, don't worry, don't worry, it's just because otherwise he's gonna take us out. As you guys are seeing, he was a correct guy, he was trying to no, no, no. pay me off the 250, do. Do. which is nice, don't shout worry. out for him. Next hand I get pocket 7s, playing my right calls in pocket 7s is just not good enough. Next hand I'm in the low jack with pocket aces, he's in the small blind and he raises 55 in the dark, I call, he has like 650 in his stack, amazing spot for me, playing my right calls. And for sure I'm gonna raise here, the question is how much, and I chose to re-raise a sizing that doesn't kill the action in case he goes all in and the play in my right cost. So I re-raise to 350 and he goes into the tank. And he folds for the first time in this table. I made a mistake, I should have re-raised a little smaller, like 200. 200 was a great sizing here and I just felt like he was going all in either way but that was not the case I made a mistake and I didn't extract as much value as I should I decided to start straddling from the under the gun and the reason for that is that I would invest six dollars to be the last one to act so that was a great investment in my opinion because he was going all in in the dark either way and I would be the last one to act he goes all in for 315 one player calls and I see a horrible hand and I fold is all in again against him huge pot around fifteen hundred dollar pot he hits a queen in the river and wins the hand again i'm cheering for after he told me to fold that nines and i folded and he had queens like i just knew i own him a lot and i'm glad to see him winning again the guy left i still made some money on him but the guy who made the most was Definitely. He left like 4k in this table playing for like an hour and a half. Like that was the craziest situation I have ever been inside Resort World. This definitely doesn't happen that often. You, you don't see this man, this is like Christmas. I don't care that I lost, it just... This guy is right, like that's the mindset that you have to have in a table like that. Poker is a game of risk taking that sometimes you're just gonna lose. But in the end you just gotta focus on making plus EV decisions. I made a mistake with the aces. I could definitely have made a lot more money in that hand if I re-raised to 200. He would probably call. But in the end, he paid me for the 250. He was a correct guy and shout out for him. And in the end, we had a great session overall, winning $1,585. And my honest opinion about the spot that 
I had queens and I have nines is that this whole situation sucks. I didn't ask for to tell me he had queens, but after he did, I just followed my instinct and folded. By the way, he could be a douchebag and tell me to fold to be able to get that guy's money with a hand that was weaker than nines, but that wasn't the case. Is a great guy who did what he did with goodwill to help me out. He would even make more money if I called, and that was the first time I met him, and unfortunately, the situation happened. Now I consider him my friend, and before some people go to the comments to point fingers, just remember we all make mistakes. There is not a single person in the world who is free of sins, and the most important thing is learning from our mistakes, which clearly did and about letting the king jack go or not in that hand i would totally do that to someone who is being nice and polite to me at the tables but as you guys saw this wasn't the case so in the end i just tried to solve the situation in a fair way and i believe i found a pretty fair solution to the problem in ev that was even less than what i would usually make in that hand with a guy going all in blind and me calling from the big blind with king jack offsuit and this is gonna be the end of this episode i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did there are hundreds of others that you might also enjoy as well just click any of the options in the screen the mission of this channel is helping you become a better poker player and see you next time